What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dabrunski here and today we're going to be talking about Hyrule farming in Diablo 2. I'm going to cover some frequently asked questions as well as some tips and tricks in specific areas that you can target in order to maximize your odds of dropping high runes in Diablo 2. Now I will note I am going to cover both ends of the spectrum of gameplay so what do I mean by that? I'm going to talk about single player and battle net farming and what you can do for both types of gameplay because I do have a lot of subscribers on my channel that play both so I want to make sure that this video caters to everyone so guys really do hope you enjoy this video let's jump in So there's a few frequently asked questions that I get on my Diablo 2 live streams and my videos about rune farming that I want to cover before we jump into some of the select areas that you can target high runes. And the first is does magic find affect high rune drops or lower Kura super chests? And the answer is no. Magic find has absolutely zero bearing on high rune farming or high rune drops. The only thing that you can actually do to increase the odds of dropping high runes is manipulating the player's difficulty setting on single player or if you're playing in larger party uh, member groups on Battle.net. Now if you want to know a little bit more about the player's X command and what it does, I do have a previously made video on my channel. The link for it is in the description below. But essentially, farming in a larger group on Battle.net or adjusting the player's difficulty higher in single player, what it does is it decreases the node drop rate on specific monsters. So what does that mean? Well, if they have a lower chance of not dropping something, it means that they have a higher chance of dropping dropping you know x item and that x item could be a high rune so obviously killing more monsters in a very quick and efficient fashion with a lower drop rate is overall over the long term going to net you better odds of dropping high runes another really common themed question i get is something along the lines of like Hey Dabrinsky, I've done 500 lower cross runs, I haven't dropped a single high rune. Or Dabrinsky, I did a thousand Travinkle runs, I didn't drop a single high rune. Or I've been farming chaos, you know, did 400 chaos runs, didn't drop a single high rune. That is part of Diablo 2 in general. It is a really RNG based game. And while yes, there are specific things that you can do to increase the odds of dropping runes, which I'm going to cover next, it's still, I mean, it's just like rolling a dice, right? Or when a lottery ticket almost and it's the reason why uh, for example I've dropped 13 job runs but I've only dropped uh, four burr runs in almost two years on my plug it's because it's very randomized and there is a large element of luck I have gone entire months where I haven't really dropped anything higher than an istrune and then I've had crazy months when I've dropped like two jaws I mean I've had a jaw and a burr in the same stream cham zod etc it is very randomized and you just have to kind of wait out the dry spells if that that makes sense but like I said there are some specific areas that you can target to maximize your odds in terms of high rune drops and now let's cover them so the first specific monster slash area that we can target for high runes or runes in general in Diablo 2 is the countess now I'm not going to spend too much time going into great detail about her rune drop table and how it interacts with key farming based on the player's difficulty setting because I do have a previously made video on my channel. It's a guide related to everything you need to know about the Countess. So I encourage you to check out that video if you haven't seen it already. But basically her special rune drop table caps out at Ist in Hell and her monster drop rune drop table, sorry, caps out at low and hell difficulty. But really she's more of a target area for those mid-level runes. So say you have everything that you need to make Hodo but you're missing a pull rune, I would farm the Countess because anything lower than Ist she is an excellent target for. I do have a previously made thousand run video project on my channel and I ran her a thousand times I didn't drop a single Ist rune which was a huge bummer and again that relates to that RNG dry spell that I was kind of talking about when we are discussing rune farming in Diablo 2. But I did drop all kinds of mouths, pulls, and ums along the way. So if you're looking to target for those mid-level runes to a somewhat approaching what you can consider a high rune, the Countess is an excellent boss to target farm in Diablo 2. Another great location for high rune target farming in Diablo 2 is the cow level. Now what makes the cow level so special is that it is great for people playing single player and battle net and there's really not too much strategy involved in it as well. So really the only thing you need to focus on if you're playing on battle net is to not kill the cow king. If you kill the cow king that character is not going to be able to make more secret cow levels so just don't do that. 
Other than that, it's basically slay as many hell bovine as you possibly can. Uh, more monsters, deaths per minute, more drops, more chances of those drops being high runes. It really is that simple. Now, in terms of characters that excel at clearing the cow level, there's quite a few like the Javazon, Blizzard Sorceress, Meteor Sorceress, Necromancer with Corpse Explosion. There is a lot of different characters, so, you know, Play with whatever one that you like, but it's really a simple strategy of just killing as many hell bovine as you can and hoping that over the long run you get more high run drops. The next location on my list is Travinkle. This is another amazing spot for high run farming, but it does have a few setbacks. Now I will say I'm not going to go into specific detail about rune drop odds, players difficulty setting, the best characters, that kind of thing, because I do have a previously made video that covers everything you need to know in regards to Travinkle. So refer to it, the link is in the description below. But I will note that these guys can drop up to Cham rune, with the drawback being you need a very powerful character in order to keep the runs within a 20 to 30 second window because anything outside of that like if you're doing minute two minute triangle runs it's really not worth your time now unfortunately short runs like that does pigeonhole you to mostly single player target high rune farming now again there are some specific niche builds on battle like a ghoul fine barb that can stay you know in the one to two minute range and not be realmed down but yeah this is a great location for high rune target farming but it really is more geared towards single player gameplay and you need more powerful high-end characters it's not really the best spot to start farming when you're building your character up in diablo 2. ghost farming is another method that you can use to farm high runes in diablo 2. now the idea behind in this strategy is that the specters or ghost packs whatever you want to call them they have elevated chances of dropping high runes compared to regular monsters now myself i don't really know the odds off the top of my head i'd have to look it up but i know it's only something like it's one out of two hundred thousand for x rune from x monster it might be one out of a hundred thousand uh on the ghost or the specter instead so yes the odds are better but I don't think it's a good idea to do like thousands of arcane sanctuary runs targeting these ghosts only. Myself, I think a good strategy is to kind of clear ghost or specter packs along the way of a specific farming route. So say you're doing countess runs in the Forgotten Tower, kind of clear the champion or boss packs of specters that you see along the way. This type of farming strategy method has netted me, I think, a vex and a gull and maybe a few other mid runes over the course of two years. But again, I don't really heavily rely on this this type of farming but it is something that I wanted to mention for you guys because I know if I didn't somebody would say something in the comment section below about me not mentioning it. The next rune farming strategy method that I'm going to talk about seems very simple guys but it has netted me the majority of my high runes over the last two years. It is effective both on battle and single player. And it is simply clearing the majority of monsters that you see in high dense areas. So it's similar to the theme of doing cow farming, but just other areas of the game. So like ancient tunnels, pits, bill runs, chaos sanctuary, just clear the majority of monsters that you see on higher players difficulty settings or larger groups on battle net. Over time will yield you Tons of high runes, I promise. You're gonna go through dry spells in and out, but the majority of my high runes have been found from this very simple method, just checking popables and killing everything that you see. Trust me guys, this method works. Next up on my list is Hellforge farming. Now in my eyes, this is really a Battle.net specific only method of high rune farming. And actually I shouldn't really even use the term high rune farming because in Hell difficulty, the Hellforge will drop up to a maximum of Gull. Now I think if you're rushing people, it might be a somewhat viable method of collecting wealth on Battle.net. Uh, most of you know that the majority of my gameplay is single player, so I don't really do Hellforge farming. I mean, I've just gone through what I've gotten as I've progressed with my different characters in the game, you know, just getting their Hellforge drop. And I think I've gotten maybe a pull, never been lucky, never got Ist or Gull or anything like that. Again, not a very popular rune farming method in my eyes, but I wanted to at least touch on it for those that uh, specifically play on Battle.net. Which brings us to the last high rune farming method that I want to discuss in this video, and that is Lower Kuras Super Chess Farming. It is the grandfather of them all, if that's even a word that's appropriate to describe it. It is the number one most efficient and effective method for farming up to a Burr rune in single player on Diablo 2. Now, unfortunately, I did say in single player, 
Lower Karas Super Chest Farming is not super viable in Battle Net because you can't keep the same static map and you also can't manipulate the player's difficulty settings. So I really only recommend Lower Karas Super Chest Farming for single player. Now I'm not going to spend too much time explaining the different room patterns in the relation to the player's difficulty setting because I do have a previously made guide video on my channel that talks about everything Lower Kuros so please refer to that video for more in-depth detail. But essentially, higher player difficulty setting increases the number of room patterns. Uh, these room patterns go up to a maximum of burr. So you're gonna try and roll a map in Lower Kuros that has two campfires for a total of six super chests, and then you're gonna pop them all as quickly as you possibly can, go back to act four, and then repeat the process over and over and over again. It is very mind-numbing, guys, but mathematically, and statistically, it is the most effective method of farming up to a burr rune on single player in Diablo 2. Well guys, there you have it. That's everything that I think you need to know about high rune farming strategies in Diablo 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, you found it informative, and you maybe learned something new. Again, it's a lot of stuff to cover in a broad video like this, so please refer to the links in the description of this video if you want to know more detail about Travincol or Lower Kuras farming or the Countess, because the purpose of this video was just a brief overview. But guys, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you could throw a like on it, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my Diablo 2 YouTube channel. Post new weekly content and stream on a weekly basis, so there's always new stuff to look forward to from this channel, and your support with a sub would mean a lot. Until next time, guys, have a good one.